Today on Tricurl Studios, we talk about why I bought my Gretsch G6120DC, so the double cut Chet Atkins Nashville. All right, so I wanted to start out with a sound sample, um, obviously so you can A, hear the guitar, uh, but uh, I wanted to kind of get out of the way, I, just as I did kind of in the um, Brian Setzer Hot Rod video. Um, I don't play like Brian Setzer, I don't play like Chet Atkins. Um, again, as in the um, Brian Setzer video, I'm a fan. Uh, of Chet Atkins, although I've been a uh, rather large fan for a long time of Brian Setzer, um, whereas for Chet Atkins, I've always known, I've always respected the impact that he's had on uh, guitar and music as a whole. Um, but I've always been a very casual fan of Chet Atkins, um, like I've always enjoyed his Christmas album. <laughs> um, and, you know, I've been known to go down the rabbit hole um, on just Chet Atkins videos and playing just giving her, <laughs> I guess you would say. That's the only way I could say it. Um, just absolutely blowing everyone's mind with what he was able to do. Um, but again, I don't play like Chet Atkins. Um, this video right here, not going to play Mr. Sandman. I'm sorry. I know, I, I think like I'm breaking a rule right now because every video uh, with this guitar, even though there's not very many of them, um, they have to play Mr. Sandman. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about why I bought it um, and what it does for me. Um, I don't want to say collection wise, but a gu guitar availability wise. Um, so basically, I saw this guitar, it popped up um, probably about four or five days ago on Stan Guitar's website here in Edmonton, and they have a Gibson Country Gentleman they've had for a long time. It's rather expensive and absolutely heartbreaking that I can't, get, I can't buy it. Uh, but uh, this guitar popped up, and I immediately thought, okay, I really have to calm myself center myself because I've been absolutely loving my um, Brian Setzer Hot Rod and I, I've been wanting another Gretsch. This, so when this one popped up, I was like, okay, think, think, think. Because I can't really, I, somehow I can afford this. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but um, I had to really stop and think because I knew it was Chet Atkins model. Uh, and with Chet Atkins models, not all of them, I shouldn't say that. Uh, some of his models, 
um, the F holes aren't real. So these are painted on F holes. And, you know, that was done to kind of combat uh, feedback back in the day. But generally when they have that, in order for them to actually have any access to the cavity to do any uh, maintenance or upgrades, they got to have this. That's right. That gives you access to the cavity if you want to do any upgrades or do any maintenance or anything like that. Um, and I'm not going to lie, uh, those two things turned me off for probably about a day and a half uh, of buying this guitar. And I was like, there's no way. Because I thought this was going to be highly noticeable. It was going to be in the way. I would feel it all the time. Uh, and I thought it looked god ugly. Like, what is it? A tambourine? I got mine here. Or like a drum head. Uh, but the more and more I, I kind of looked into it, um, the more and more I actually thought there was value in having no F hole in this guitar. Uh, and, and honestly, at this point, I, I kind of think this is cool. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison acoustically, of course, uh, between this, my hot rod and the ES335 and you can kind of hear uh, hopefully what's kind of going on there. Um, but anyway, I saw this on Stan Guitars. Uh, I kind of went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and I finally uh, bought it. But um, some of the reasons that I wanted this guitar was it actually has the muting system. So you see this little black thing here? Uh, it's actually a piece of like pad foam and there's this little thing where you flick up and it brings it up to the strings. And what that does is it actually mutes and muffles the strings um, so you get a bit of a different sound. And it's something where you can actually do a bit of palm muting along with this and it gives it a really distinct sound. So, you can have it off or have it on. It's a great feature to have whether you use it or not. So something I've always been interested in, uh, this one here has two volumes and a master volume. So the volume is for each pickup and the master volume is an overall volume. So if you get like a sweet spot or whatever in one of the pickups, you can roll this around and you can kind of cut it off. It also has a kill switch. Will I use it on this guitar? I don't think so, but you know what? It's, again, good option to have. Next up, uh, you have your pickup selector, so bridge, middle, and neck. And then, of course, where's the tone? Here's the tone. So in the middle uh, position, uh, what it does is it gives you, like, there's, there's, there's no tone in the signal. It kind of bypasses it. And then if you flick it down, it's like you're rolling the tone back. And then if you flick it up, it's like rolling the tone way, way, way back. Um, I've heard conflicting things, whether it's kind of rolling it all the way off or rolling it to around like seven or eight. Um, so I'm not quite sure, but uh, it's that would give you like a more of a jazzier type sound to it. Uh, anyway, it's got the same Bigsby as it has on my Brian Setzer hot rod. And it has, I believe these are Grovers. Yes, the Grover vintage style, like the open back tuners. So, uh, those are kind of the specs for it and kind of why I wanted it. So I wanted another Gretsch and uh, the multitude of features that are actually available on this guitar um, just makes it a no-brainer and especially you can never find these um, and it was a good price. So what I'd like to do now is actually do a little bit of kind of an A-B um, comparison. I'm not going to be using any mics or anything like that. I'm not going to be going through an amp, but hey, I used an orange amp with an orange guitar. I had to do that. Um, but acoustically, uh, so you can kind of hear what happens without a sound hole and with a sound hole.
right, so I find that this actually, um, it's a little bit of, there's more resonance, obviously, um, because everything's kind of held within, um, but it's a little more poppier, a little more compressed when you're playing acoustically, and let me tell you, when you're playing, um, it feels incredible. Like this, you can dig in, but this is just very pleasing, um, I guess, to the body um, when you're playing, like to your actual body, because you kind of feel it a little more than you do here. Um, but here is a, as I sh shouldn't be holding the pick, uh, here is a Brian Setzer hot rod, and here is the uh, Chet Atkins Nashville. So uh, let's look, they're both 6120s. Uh, but you can notice, um, obviously, with the single cut here, it's a little thicker than the double cut. Um, but yeah, that's basically having this gives me um, another Gretsch to play with. <laughs> and this here with the F holes, it, it's a completely different playing experience. And then, of course, we have the Gibson ES335 compared to the Chet Atkins. Um, G6120 DC double cut, the Nashville. Uh, that's a lot of things. This is ES335. This is a mouthful. Uh, so this, because this is a semi-hollow body, uh, whereas this is a hollow body, they feel completely different. However, like, if you're looking at it size-wise, they are, um, like, the ears on this one here, the mouse ears are a little bigger. Um, where the neck heel meets on the body is completely different, and you don't have the access to the higher frets um, that you do on the ES335. Um, and thickness-wise, this is a little thicker, so this is a little thinner. So depending on yourself, uh, you might actually find this to be a little more comfortable. You might find this to be a little more comfortable. Uh, but basically, what this does for me now, it gives me uh, three hollow slash semi-hollow guitars that I can pull from if I'm looking to um, do any type of cleaner or uh, clean, dirty, I guess you would say, sounds. Or in this, I could rip out completely. This I probably will too. I'll probably do a Will It Metal uh, video for the Chet Atkins, and it'll probably annoy people. Um, but anyway, it just gives me more options. Uh, clearly, I am a giant guitar nerd um, with 55, which I really have to get rid of some of my um, my uh, overseas guitars, I guess you would say. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, I'll probably do proper video comparisons with these um, or this and the Brian sets or, uh, but it, it's something that'll definitely be down the line. Um, I know a lot of people have been waiting on me to do the amp head shootouts, but I've had an issue with my uh, Universal Audio Apollo Twin, um, which I basically use just for DSP and as a headphone amp, and it is having some major problems. So I ordered a headphone amp, an SPL headphone amp. So I kind of have to wait for that to come in to properly, properly be able to do that. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, watch out for more videos on this guitar.